Hey everyone, happy Friday, and welcome to another episode of First Chapter Fridays. I am going to be reading to you Kate DiCamillo's book, The Beatrice Prophecy. Um, Just a little bit about Kate DiCamillo. Kate DiCamillo's writing journey has been a truly remarkable one. She grew up in Florida and moved to Minnesota in her 20s. When homesickness and a bitter winter led her to write because of Win dixie her first published novel, which became a runaway bestseller and snapped up a Newbery honor. The Tiger Rising, her second novel, was also set in Florida and went on to become a National Book Award finalist. Since then, the best-selling author has explored settings as varied as a medieval castle and a magician's theater while continuing to enjoy great success, winning two Newbery medals and being named National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. She now has almost 30 million books in print worldwide. Now, for the first time ever, Kate DiCamillo is returning to the world of a previous novel to tell us more about a character whom her fans already know and love. In Louisiana's Way Home, set two years after the events of National Book Award finalist Ramey Nightingale, she picks up the story of Ramey's friend, Louisiana Elefanif, Elef- who uncovers difficult truths about her past and makes choices that will determine her future. Kate DiCamillo's books, themes of hope and belief amid impossible circumstances, and their messages of shared humanity and connectedness have resonated with readers of all ages around the world. In her instant number one New York Times bestseller, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, a haughty China rabbit undergoes a profound transformation after finding himself face down on the ocean floor, lost and waiting to be found. The Tale of Despero, the Newbery Medal-winning novel that later inspired an animated adventure from Universal Pictures, stars a tiny mouse with exceptionally large ears who is driven by love to become an unlikely hero. The magician's elephant, an acclaimed and exquisitely pieced, uh, paced fable, dares to ask the question, what if? And Kate DiCamillo's second Newbery Medal winner, Flora and Ulysses, was released in 2013 to great acclaim, garnering five starred reviews and an instant spot on the New York Times bestseller list. Born in Philadelphia, but raised in, South, in the South, Kate DiCamillo now lives in Minneapolis, where she faithfully writes two pages a day, five days a week. The Beatrice Prophecy. Just going to read a little bit on the back, so the back blurb, just to see what this book is about. Need my glasses for this one. In a time of war, the mysterious child appears at the monastery of the Order of the Chronicles of Sorrowing. Gentle brother Edict finds the girl Beatrice curled in a stall, racked with fever, and covered in dirt and blood. As the monk nurses Beatrice to health, he uncovers her dangerous secret, one that imperils them all, for the king of the land seeks just such a girl, and Brother Edic, who penned the prophecy himself, knows why. So it is that a girl with a head full of stories ventures into a dark wood in search of the castle of one who wishes her dead. But Beatrice knows that, Should she lose her way, those who love her will never give up searching for her. And to know this is to know everything. The Beatrice Prophecy by Kate DiCamillo. Illustrated by Sophie Blackall. It is written in the Chronicles of Sorrowing that one day there will come a child who will unseat a king. The prophecy states that this child will be a girl. Because of this, the prophecy has long been ignored. Book the First. Answalika was a goat with teeth that were the mirror of her soul, large, sharp, and uncompromising. One of the goat's favorite games was to lull the monks of the Order of the Chronicles of Sorrowing into a sense of complacency by arranging her features in a benign and indifferent expression. For weeks, she would bite no one. When approached, she would merely stare into the distance, 
as if she were considering something profound. And then, when the brothers had relaxed their guard, thinking that perhaps somehow Answelika had changed, the goat would come from behind and butt them in backside as hard as she was able. She was very strong, and she had a very hard head. Because of this, the goat was able to send the monks flying great distances through the air. When they landed, she bit them. She was a goat who formed peculiar and inexplicable antipathies, taking an intense dislike to certain individuals. She would stalk a particular brother, waiting for him in the purple shadow of a building, and then she would leap out and make an unholy noise that sounded like the scream of a demon. The monk, terrified, undone, would scream too. The monk and the goat would then engage in a duet of screaming until the goat was satisfied and trotted away, looking beatific, leaving behind her a trembling, weeping monk. The brothers of the Order of the Chronicles of Soaring would have liked to butcher her, but they were afraid of the ghost of Answelica. The monks agreed among themselves that the ghost of the goat would surely be more vicious and determined, more impossible to outwit than the flesh and blood goat. How would she seek her revenge from the afterworld? It beggared the imagination to consider what the, goat, the ghost goat would do. And so she lived, which is just as well, which is, in fact, wonderful, because without the goat, Beatrice surely would have died. And then, where would she be? Thank you so much for watching our first chapter Friday featuring the Beatrice Prophecy. Have a great Friday, and don't forget to like and subscribe.